Welcome to episode number 21 of The Roar, the show for all things Hershey Cubs, players, coaches, personnel, and news. I'm Clay Thomas, but I feel like at this point, everybody probably knows that. Uh, the host of this podcast, along with Joshua Gerhardt and broadcaster for the Hershey Cubs this season. Joining me today are Cubs forwards, Zachary Slayball and Michael Narotsky. And I know for a fact I just said it right that time because I've been called out by Coach Thompson before that I've said it wrong, even though I thought I heard it right in the audio. Um, file that he gave me for some players trying to you know make sure i say their names right but how are you guys doing today and did i get it right this time michael i sure i should have yeah that's just really good that was really good (laughs) thank you (laughs) yeah we're doing great i'm excited to be on here this is awesome all right so we're gonna go back in in time a little bit here boys but i just wanted to get to know you guys a little bit more here throughout this episode so how did you guys wind up choosing the hershey cubs for your first years in the usphl um, so for me, I was a younger kid coming in. I'm an 06 and um, Brennan reached out. Um, he saw me play in my high school championship at Hershey Park Arena and he kind of reached out based on that. And then I came and skated with the Cubs. And then from there, they offered me a contract and it was too hard to pass up. There you go. Simple as that. Not too bad. And Michael. for me, I get chance like last year i signed contract but i got big trouble with visa from my country from poland so i had that mm-hmm. so i didn't come here this year they give me contract one more time and i was like just just go for it i can be here just for three months then go home on the christmas break so i can return my visa for 90 days and then mm-hmm. i can come back for the rest of the season so i'm here you're here just a little bit more trouble than some other guys but yeah. Michael, specifically for you, I know that your language barrier could be a little bit different, especially because there's a lot of guys that speak French that are on the team. But you, you're one of the um, guys that doesn't speak French, and it was a little different for you, but speaking Polish as well. Um, I mean, for the one thing, trying to communicate to you, I had to download WhatsApp, which I have, haven't had for how long, but um, that's just one aspect of it. But what's it been like for you personally trying to you know, get a little bit more acclimated with the team? Um, with that kind of a language barrier as compared to some of the other guys? I think the hardest part was like uh, at the beginning of the scene, especially when people like don't know me. Mm-hmm. So like my English isn't perfect because it's not. And like I try to just speak that everybody can understand me. And I think that was like the hardest part. And right now, like when everybody under- like know me, they understand me more. So I don't like I don't have any trouble right now with with like speaking and stuff like this. Right. Now, I know both of you guys, it feels like probably everybody has gone through some injuries throughout the season. Guys have missed time for small things, some bigger things. I know, Michael, you first. It was in the very beginning of the year. You uh, broke your wrist or your arm? Yeah, I broke my, I broke my, I shattered my wrist. Exactly. This is what our physiotherapist said. So I got surgery like two weeks after. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have screw and play in my hand. Uh, then I back, go back home, get some like rest, and get physiotherapy to start moving my wrist. That uh, that gets like two and a half months, I guess, or three. I co- and I come back like with full speed. Mm-hmm. And Zach, go. I know you had some injuries, maybe not as crucial yeah. or not as major as what Michael had to go through, but just speak on some of what happened with you this season. And then for both you guys, whoever wants to go first, what that's like trying mentally trying to, you know, get back right, get healthy in, in order to go back onto the ice. Yeah. Like, so for me, it was, it wasn't as nearly as serious as Michael. I didn't miss nearly as much time. I, um, it was when we were in Detroit and the second game of that Detroit showcase, I got, hit along the wall, just like a little hit, nothing too crazy. And I got a hairline fracture on my collarbone and I've broken my collarbone before on my other shoulder, actually. And that one, it was like the wing, like, like it broke the end off the bone. So that one was Mm -hmm. a lot more serious. That took a lot more time. So I was really worried when it happened because I kind of knew right away it was the same pain. But um, yeah, it was just a little tiny uh, fracture on the inside of the bone. So it actually turned out to be like the best possible outcome because I wasn't out for too long. I think it was nice because it actually it came at a good time because it was right before Thanksgiving break. Mm -hmm. So I had like that whole week and a half off to just kind of rest it and I wasn't really missing anything. So I think I only ended up about missing 
two weeks of games so before I was back on the ice and back skating. So it wasn't too, too bad. It's definitely – I was lucky that it wasn't worse and I was able to have such a speedy recovery. <clears throat> And then uh, I guess so I can lead into Michael because Zach kind of answered it there then too. What's that mental process like when you're trying to go through that rehab in order not only to get back fully healthy and, you know, make sure you're all right first and foremost, but to just be able to get back onto the ice and get back to normal hockey? I think the hardest part was like that was my dream to come here and at the first game just happened uh, and – I have to go back to Poland, to my family. So I was speaking a lot with my friends, with my parents, especially like what I'm going to do right now. And they were like, just think forward, like your hand going to be fine in a couple of weeks and a couple of months. And this season, it's still long. So you're going to go back and you're going to still going to play and you're going to have fun. So that was the main point, like put your head, like thinking forward didn't think what is right now like I have to go through so for me it was really good that this happened I think so that I can mentally really know that injuries in ice hockey especially like you need to have something also on your back like school so I'm I was doing also school in Poland so I didn't okay. so mentally you have to push it to yourself forward and didn't think like it's over you have to just think like when you're gonna come back you're gonna go get stronger gotcha it's it's nice to hear that you guys can you know find the good things and like you know some tragic events especially something like if michael's where you're gonna be out for how long or zach you know you found that you know it happened at a good time and you only missed a little bit or yeah you broke your collarbone but it was in like the best possible spot you know what i mean mm -hmm. and yeah Oh, go for it. Go for it. I was just like, for me, like, it's kind of the same thing, like Michael said, but like, I couldn't imagine like being in Michael's spot, you know, coming mm -hmm. all the way from Poland and then very first game of the season, you get so excited and do all that work in training camp leading up to it to start. And then to like, have it almost be taken away from you and like, um, have to get surgery and go home. Like, it's just, it's a crazy spot to be in and it's just really unfortunate, but it is, I wasn't, I'm just thankful that I wasn't really you know in a situation as bad as that I guess but you know let's let's go to something a little bit more you know a little bit more happy a little bit more upbeat <laughs> type of a thing here real quick but uh, you neither of you uh wasted any time with getting some points on the board for when you did play I know Michael it took you until January you played your first game at Elmira and then nothing happened you didn't play many minutes because of the injury but yeah. then when you came back first game in January on the 6th you got a goal. What did that feel like? What was that feeling for you uh, against Buffalo? Oh, my goodness. I think that was the best feeling. Um, coming back after three months, I guess, that was like, I can't I can't just say this because, like, it's it, it just feeling inside, you know, like everything in my head, in my heart and stuff like this. Like, it, it was just beautiful. I can say all yeah. that like that. It's beautiful. And sport, sports have a way of being poetic. And that was one of the awesome, most awesomest things. I don't know if that was the correct grammar, but that was one of the best <laughs> things I've seen uh, throughout this season. Uh, you being able to fight your way back and then get back into the States and then get that first goal. And then on Zach's side, didn't take, didn't waste uh, many time, much time as well. Fourth game in, you already had a couple assists in one game, but then you cracked your first goal back in uh, yeah. October the 9th. What was that feeling like for you getting your first June, uh, USPHO goal? Yeah, it was pretty surreal. Like it was, you know, it was, it was a really cool feeling too. Just like, you know, cause it's definitely not something you want to wait around to get because then as you go longer without scoring, it starts to wear on you and starts to build. So you always kind of want to get the first one out of the way. So, you know, to have it the way it did um, with the pass from Colin and then the shot from Dave and I just buried the rebound. It was almost like, it was almost more of like a feeling of relief just to get that first one out of the way. And, um, you know, it's like a weight lifted off your shoulders. So it felt really good. Hey, firsts are always the best because then you can just kind of start playing free and just, you know, not have to worry about it anymore. And I mean, for Michael, it was one it was a game where you could start to play a little more free because that was pretty much of a blowout game as well uh, for you guys. And then, you know, to bury that one, get your first. That's a great sign. But, um, you know, growing up for each of you, who who have you ever, you know, now or like when you were younger, 
kind of modeled your game after or kind of looked up to? I mean, I can see uh, Zach's got some San San Jose Sharks <laughs> uh, merchandise <laughs> behind him. But either for either of you, who have you guys decided to model your game after or look up to? Yeah, I've always been a huge Sharks fan growing up. So I've always just um kind of been biased to liking all Sharks players and everything Sharks. But um, I always, me personally, like I always really enjoy – even still now, like I always enjoy watching players that are like really good skaters and really mm-hmm. just like skilled players. Cause I think like, like right now, I think one of my favorite players to watch now is probably Jack Hughes, just cause he's such a smooth skater and just mm-hmm. such a, like, he just moves so well out there growing up. My favorite player was always Joe Pavelski. And I always liked the way he could score. And, uh, you know, he never was like a guy that was going to like go end to end or score the nicest goal, but you know, they don't ask how, they ask how many. And he was always really good at, like, tipping and just being in the right spot at the right time. And he always put up pretty good numbers, which I loved. Michael, what about you? So, for me, uh, like, when I was younger, uh, it was Philadelphia Flyers. That was my favorite team. And my favorite <clears throat> player was Claude Giroux. It's, yes. Yes. <laughs> it's because, like, I love seeing him, like, playing with Voracek, those duo was, like, amazing. Mm-hmm. And I, I like the way when Claude G was playing. Like, he was a great center, great captain for Philadelphia. But right now, I move up to Tampa Bay Lightning, and Nikita Kucherov is, like, main player for me. I really love his way when he's, like, skating, making the places, shooting, everything. Like, his hands are, like, amazing so i really try to be like him on the eyes i like, look it up a lot and so i know michael mentioned it before about you know being in school at the same time so just talk to me about what it's like to play in a junior level um i know zach you are from gettysburg or you're not living with a billet mm-hmm. family correct no so yeah i'm actually still at home so yeah. it is kind of funny growing up no matter where i've played like i've always kind of like everybody like thinks it's like just a hilarious thing that I live in Gettysburg with like the battlefield and everything, like no matter what team I've been on, that's always been kind of like, that's always carried with me. But I did, that's one of the factors that played into me signing with the Cubs is, you know, if I played in Hershey, I could be at home because we thought like some of the billets are 45 minutes away. So like, Mm -hmm. what's the point in billeting when I can stay at home and, you know, gets a little boring driving the same road every day, but it is, it is nice being able to be at home every night. And for for Michael, obviously, you know, you you have to bill it. You can't just drive across the pond over there or anything like that. But uh, what's it been like for you uh, being so far away from home and what's and the billet experience and how much have they been able to been a benefit for you being in the States? I think this year it's not that hard because I didn't leave with my parents since I was 14. So I have been in Sweden for two years, in Germany mm-hmm. for three years. So only the the hard thing is like the time difference in Poland. It's like plus six hours. And basically this is it. So, and I live with a couple of other players like Jameson, Nick, M.A. and Marco. So we love to be here. We love our billet family. Like they're doing really everything for us. Like... Without without my billet mom and billet dad, I will be like not able to stay alive when I was getting surgery. So mm-hmm. like too big stress, really. I didn't know like trust me, I didn't know so many words in, in English at this time. So like when he was coming to me, like only one thing what I understand was like you broke your hand, and I was like, please no. Right. So without them, like really, I can do nothing over here. Yeah. And what is it? What did that billet billet appreciation night mean to you knowing that they were going to be there? And, you know, it's like also for you, you're going to age out this year, Um, not to mention that you had to have that time off. But now you're back and you're here for the playoff push. But what did that billet appreciation night mean to you then um, being it is that it will be your last year with the Cubs? I think it's to say thank you for them that they opened their home for us and that we can leave you they can help us with a lot of stuff like especially i'm from poland from europe it's big really big different to live in europe and then in us 
So like basically all the time they show me something new, they new food, new like streets, people, like I get new contacts from them. Like I really want to say thank you to them because like I haven't seen so big word like right now. Yeah. You know, it, it is awesome what how many of these uh families can do for a lot of these players. You know, they show up too to a lot of their games. They're very supportive. We love to see it. I know, Zach, you don't get that uh aspect of it because you still live at home. But speaking of living at home again, and you mentioned, you know, you're from Gettysburg and everything like that. How often have you visited the uh Civil War uh <laughs> battlefields and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> so like <clears throat> Not as much as you think I probably should. <laughs> um, it is funny. So where my house sits, like the neighborhood I live in, I'm pretty sure used to be like, a, um, I'm pretty sure it was like a tank facility where like they like, wow. they call it like it's named after like it was a camp for like Dwight Eisenhower or whatever. And oh, he wow. like had like trained all these tanks and stuff right where I'm living. And you can actually like, if you walk to the um, like other side of my neighborhood, it sits right on the battlefield. So my uh... dad was actually... My dad's actually a, a fourth grade teacher and growing up at the school I went to, his elementary school that he teaches at, you know, we were kind of like um, blessed because we could go to on field trips and walk to them from where our school was. Like, I hear like these stories of like kids I know from like hockey and stuff. They'll be like, yeah, we went to Gettysburg on a field trip and I'm like, yeah, we used to go like every week we'd take a walk out on the battlefield or, you know, this and that, like all these different places. So I think I, I can say that I've been to like every like main battlefield landmark in Gettysburg, but I definitely probably don't go as much as you think I would <laughs> living here. <laughs> I was uh, one of those kids growing up in middle school. I believe it was middle school. I actually had one of those field trips and I feel like yeah. it could it could have been a lot more <clears throat> fun, but it felt like some of it, we just like were on the bus, got out for right. a couple of minutes get back on the shuttle bus it was like can i like walk around and do my own thing because <laughs> right. i forget i think i think it's what is it little round top and big round top yeah yeah the so big... there's little round top big round top cops hill devil's den those are like yeah. the main ones those are the big big landmarks that it's crazy in the summertime all the tourists and stuff people like they go crazy over this stuff so it is pretty cool to say i'm from here but it definitely always carries like an association with me in the battlefield <laughs> yeah maybe we somebody should just give you a nickname called like the general or something because it's right there <laughs> i'm surprised yeah, that know. hasn't even been thought of yet maybe i'm just weird or goofy for thinking that but uh so michael being in the states for how long now has there been anywhere that you've gotten to see you know historical or pretty cool <clears throat> Um, I know. Were you one of the kids that went with M.A. into downtown New York City at all when he randomly took a trip? Or were you not here for that? Because you said no, you lived I, with M.A., but I wasn't sure. Yeah, I lived with him, but I wasn't there. OK. But I, I, mean, would, I would love to go there. It's, yeah. it's the first point after the season when we win national, I go to New York City. <laughs> Uh, is it, has there been any other places or, or is that just like the number one bucket list item for you to visit while you're here? Or have you seen anything else yet? Not really. I mean, of course, my bullet family show me a lot. And like players that I leave with them, they show me also a lot of stuff. And like, I love it. But there's a couple places like New York City. I really want to see those big buildings like that I can see only in movies. Yeah. And after the season, I also try to go to some NHL game, like maybe in Philly or New York. Oh, you'll have to go see a Flyers game, man. They're not super. They're not crazy expensive. The building's awesome. It's a fun time. Yeah. So like, this is like second dream. Just go to an NHL game, and mm -hmm. we we will see. We will see after nationals when we come back with the with the first place. With the first place, I like that mindset, and that kind of that was a great uh. Le or um segue into my next conversation topic but uh you guys got playoffs coming up you got two games left on the schedule for the regular season but you know i don't want to look too far ahead because you got to handle a couple there but what is it what's the mindset for you guys specifically and as a team as a whole once you go into those national tournament games and into playoffs yeah i think it's just um kind of about going in with confidence you know we can't really 
look at our opponent and think, oh, you know, no matter who we get in the first round, it's you can't like look at them and be like, oh, they took a couple games from us in the regular season. You know, they could have NCDC drop downs, you know, they're all this and that. You can't really look on like the ne- like the negatives. Um, I think it's more just coming in with confidence, remembering who we are, remembering what we bring, remembering, um, you know, the players that we have and the way we play. And I think if we come in with confidence and belief, I think we have the group of guys and I think we have the skill and work ethic in our locker room to be able to make a strong run. Michael, how about you? I think also big deal. It's our mentally, like we have to push ourselves forward and like, really this is how Slay say, don't think against who we play. We just have to play this, what we know and this, what we can and play on 150% or like 200% to win the game and do it for the team, especially do it for yourself to prove it that you really can play on some high level and you really know how to do it. So. And so for you guys on game day, now this has always been Josh's question. I always re- reiterate it because he's the one who came up with it. Give him some credit there. But on game day for you guys, do you have any specific routines or superstitions you got to stick to or anything like a, um, you know, a specific game day meal that you have to have? Michael, I'll start start with either one of you, whoever wants to go first. So I think for me, I don't know where like this came from or where it originated, but ever since like the beginning of the year and since I started playing juniors, it's like, I don't know, I've just been doing it like. I when I get to the rink the very first thing I do is change out of whatever I'm wearing and put on like my uh like my uh cup shorts like I always have those on when I get to the rink and I just I don't know I like the feeling of being in them they're kind of comfortable and I just like to have those on when I'm warming up and my favorite thing to do before the game I always there's a couple of us that we always play sue with the soccer ball so that's like my favorite thing to do you know just to get the blood flowing and uh get get some energy and just it's that's always a good time that's my favorite thing to do not bad not bad a little nice simple comfortable aspect to it i like it i like it michael how about you yep. so the first thing what i do it's like when i step in the locker room i put my phone away just play some of my music get change take my sticks check it out tape it I didn't speak a lot with players before the game because I like to sit in quiet, do my own things, think about the game, what I'm going to do, what can happen and stuff like this and get ready for the game. Yeah, a little silent assassin type of aspect to it. I like it. I like that too. <laughs> now, uh, more or less on the ice, are either of you two big chirpers or who, do, or do you just like to let your game speak for yourself sometimes? <clears throat> Uh, for me, usually my my kind of uh, approach to it's always been I always try and, uh, you know, actually be friendly with the opponents and always talk to them like at the face offs and stuff just to, you know, keep it keep it light. So that way they're not looking. I don't want to put a target on my back and have <laughs> them be looking to run me or take shots at me. So I've always kind of just been trying to, you know, keep it light with the other guys. I'll always, you know talk to them when we're skating down the ice or whatever or you know just just keep it cool I guess not too big of a chirper unless somebody really gets me worked up (laughs) Michael how about you I really don't care when it's when it have to happen and it's gonna happen well I can say like at least they can touch it my teammate so if something happened I will jump as a first player but like if they're gonna make me angry I'm gonna make trash talk so like yeah. of course i i can speak in polish and they will not understand me it's just like fuck <laughs> it but like to, like try to try to be like normal and if they're gonna make me angry like better they don't see me yeah that's kind of that's that's a lethal weapon to have you know they're talking <laughs> talking back to you but then you just you just say something they have no idea what you said they're probably kind of like oh i don't know what to do now and i think he just won yeah yeah. See, there's there's benefits to, you know, speaking multiple languages, especially if it's your, your main one, and then you can just have that upper hand. That's kind of cool, though. I like that, especially when guys don't know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, and, you, and, like, they think something, but inside, like, when I say something in Polish, like, really badly, 
they all like <laughs> look at me like I I stupid and I'm like like dude I just like <laughs> I just kill you right now and like you think something like I'm stupid and, I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll come back at you and try to and put one in the back of the net. Uh, that's, yeah. that's the best. That's awesome. But uh, we're running short on time here, but this has been a fun one with you guys, and I really appreciate you guys coming on. But do you either of you guys have final thoughts as we round out this episode? Yeah, I just really appreciate having you on and getting the chance to come on here and talk a little about myself. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, we're just we're trying to get ready, trying to get prepared for what's to come here in the future. And uh, hopefully we can bring back a national championship banner to Hershey Park Arena. Yes, sir. Thank you so far so much for inviting me to this podcast. And we will get ready to come with the first place. <laughs> with the first place i love it absolutely yep. love it with that michael zachary thank you guys for joining me on this edition of the roar i'm clay thomas everybody knows that drill find us on youtube at hershey cubs the roar subscribe and follow as well as at hershey cubs on instagram twitter tiktok or hershey cubs on facebook hit that like button subscribe follow us on all accounts fear the roar awesome you guys